nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Label. All right. Label. Label. Everyone get a chance to go over the minutes from the last meeting? Yes. I understand a motion. To Move to approve. Second. Move it and second. All those in favor? All right. And where it works, info only. Any questions on that? Sure, I can answer them. Okay. Um, Ted asked me um, if we could push the Meadow Creek discussion to the next meeting because they're still doing some investigation on that MOU. Okay. Does anyone have any issue with that? Nope. Do we need to make that a motion, Andy? Why don't you make a motion to postpone until the meeting? Entertain a motion to postpone the you know, Creek resolution and discussion to next meeting. I'll <coughs> second. Move and second. And all those in favor? All right, thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Review of naming city streets. That was have a, that information. Is that a resolution or That was um, the last meeting. Did I not include that? Yes, it was a memorandum that Attorney Perkins had put together because we've had a couple of questions on what the process is of renaming public streets or naming public streets that are not named. So uh, Attorney Perkins put that together for us to kind of review. I don't know that we really need any official action on that tonight other than just. Kind of this was his, his investigation of the process um, and who the authority actually would be. Because we've had a question if it was Board of Works or Council. So in your opinion, it's Council, correct? Hey, I read that correctly. Council, because there is no ordinance specifically delegating that to the Board of Works, which the Council could do. <coughs> Needed on this? I don't think at this time, I don't know that we have anything in, in, imminent right now to move forward with, do we? No, I, I, don't, I don't think so. Unless, if, if, someone get, if someone decides that, that you want to see what an ordinance look like, or, or like that would look like, to, so it doesn't, they, they don't ever come in front of you again, we can do that. Is that something we'd like to do, is kick that over to the Board of Works? Or do you want to be the one to name the streets, John? Oh, I could have some fun with that one. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say I can't say it's that frequent. So no, it is not. It it is really rare that it happens, but um, it has been coming up. And as develop, I think as developments start cropping up around the city, I think we're going to see more and more of that because we've got areas that have a platted road or street, but don't necessarily have a name. And so I think we need to have a process, but well, isn't it it seems like the Board of Works would be a more appropriate. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it just seems to be more appropriate. Okay, so then I they we're meet asking twice you to draft can we draft something up for us? Yeah, sure, I can draft that and okay. discuss it next mm -hmm. month then. Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> okay. So we have one resolution mm -hmm. tonight. We're uh, tabling the Minnow Creek. <clears throat> so, I'll, any any questions, discussions on on this? It's pretty self-explanatory. It's a virtual meeting policy. I didn't have any. Uh, entertain a motion for the reading of Resolution 4-2022. But that alone? It's up to you. You make the resolution. It's a, it's, it, it's a resolution. You technically don't even have to read it, any part of it. You can just move to pass the resolution. I like your idea. Like <laughs> <laughs> Why did you talk about it? You got off easy, John. I like it. You all, all this time. So it moves in my motion. So I second that. Just adopt. Adopt. To what you vote for it. Yeah. All right. So move and second it. All those in favor? All right. Okay. 
Right. Looks like you're the only department head. Just pretend I'm not here and carry on. <laughs> <laughs> got my report. We've got um, your report. It's doing that for all the departments. No, She's all sorry. Right. <laughs> I can prob probably <laughs> give you a close rundown of what they're going to say. Um, for the month of March, 17 accidents, 23 warnings, 56 offenses, uh, 41 case reports, 817 calls for service, 19 lockouts, four towed vehicles, and 20 people incarcerated. Yeah, the, the, List of crimes those people are locked for. Um, other than that, we've got Brady Briggs going to the academy. He starts Monday. Um, we've still got Bryce Michael in FTO. He's not ready to be on his own yet. And then we're still down one officer that we need to, we need to hire one more. Um, we had our last <coughs> process, we had three applications turned in. And we unfortunately didn't have anybody that we felt was would be a good fit for the department. So one of them withdrew his application. The other two need a little more life experience. We're going to have to start all over. I don't expect it to be any better this time, but we're going to have to start over and try. Mm -hmm. That's all I have, unless you have any questions. Any questions for Chief? Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, okay, now the report of committees. Perry, do you have anything for us tonight? I do. Quick. All right, the floor is yours. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of things. Thank you. Uh, you guys haven't spent anywhere near enough money, so I'm here to present <laughs> some opportunities. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, I'm drunk. Wait a minute. <laughs> just, 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 just let Martin know how much you check. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Shana likes to hear. Uh, yeah, and it's funny. Exactly. You notice I kind of wasn't taking a hit from my car. I don't know. Thanks, Harry. <laughs> Well, uh, just kind of want to give you guys a quick uh, uh, update on our facade grant. Our current fund balance is $11,378.79. That's the money we use to help stimulate facades. Um, and at this point, I don't think, that, unless there's you know s several projects that come forward in the next few months, I don't anticipate us running out of money this year. Um, but you know, if we, if we do, we'll come back with a request for that. Last year, we distributed twenty thousand seven hundred fifty dollars in facades, which stimulated um, thirty-two thousand five hundred and seventy-nine dollars of uh, construction. Plus, if you include the MSRP project, it gets to six hundred and six thousand dollars of of facade work that was done last year. Um, that was partially stimulated by um, the MSRP project. <coughs> Um, with me today, I do have a couple chairs of our RDP board. Um, Christine Walsh chairs our promotions committee, and Chad Heise chairs our design committee. And we have a couple projects for um, this year that we are here to kind of request you guys um, consider releasing some of the money that's been budgeted uh, for RDP for this year. Um, First project is a, um, I guess the best way to call it, maybe a, a wayfinding signs that we have created for downtown. Uh, just kind of here marking out on the, the points of entry into the community, how to get to downtown. Um, this project is uh, being, uh, you know, eventually we would like to see uh, several additional wayfinding signs in town, but this is kind of the start of um, this just kind of highlighting where downtown is there's other big needs we believe for um, wayfinding that points out points of interest throughout the community with some type of uh, common look um, we well probably two or three years ago we actually pre-pandemic whatever that was you know we had um, a consultant that kind of gave us some uh, pie in the sky <clears throat> numbers and at that time it was just decided to do nothing, um, but we've kind of taken it in internally and um, developed a project um, since that period of time. Uh, and we're making the signs locally. Chad company, Kiwan Screen, Screen Printing is doing the, the vinyl for them and uh, Craig Welding is doing the actual metal construction of the sign. And uh, I think the county is either going to uh, sell us a cost or donate the uh, sign posts these will be put in um, just like any other street sign is put in, like a stop sign or or any type of uh, sign that'll have a snap off. You know, basically a 
socket goes in the ground and then a post goes inside that socket and somebody hits it with the vehicle, it just snaps off. Um, Chad's got a map of where we're going to be, we are going to be putting these signs and, um, and we took some photos of what the area <coughs> kind of looks like so you can kind of get a visual what the sign will look like when it's <coughs> placed. Thank you. Anybody else came from? I'm impressed with uh, how you can do this, Chad. Yeah, it's like yeah, it's hard. Really hard on this project. Mm -hmm. um, this is kind of what the sign looked like. <coughs> with a directional arrow of some form. And it's going to be reflective. Is that, uh, yeah, the of vinyl. Yeah, we got some. So it kind of follows the theme of what the state does with uh, information signs and the brown mm -hmm. look. Mm -hmm. Now, Harry, is that in, in, will that be an issue with the state since they do DNR signs and stuff like that with brown? That wasn't an issue with them because I know you guys were talking to them. With the no, we've been event. talking with them. Mm -hmm and uh, locations and so forth okay. as to where they're going and um, they've kind of given their blessing on what we've outlined. Basically it's all the entry points as you come in on <coughs> 31 mm -hmm. as you're sitting there at the exit ramps off 25 no matter which direction and um, out by Hardesty Printing. Um, out that Desmore Park Road in 14. Mm -hmm. And 14 coming in from the west there before you get CBS. <clears throat> Will these need to be, how often would they need to be replaced or re I don't know how long the material? Thinking two to four years might be. I've, I've heard estimates as low as two recently, but I. I sell a lot of dumpster decals and so forth that are lasting four to five years. Depends on sun exposure. Okay. It would just be like you could apply a new vinyl to it right. and just rejuvenate it you know, after it's in place so it wouldn't be as expensive. <coughs> that Because that was going to be a maintenance, I'm thinking maintenance moving forward as far as budgeting goes. So when we think we need to put that into the budget if, if the council approves this, that you know, what we would need to look at in <coughs> two to four years. And do you have the cost on that too? Yeah, I'm going to so, looking at all the costs, the metal signs, uh, the price right now, um, if we wait longer, the price will go up. Price of metal is going up very fast. Uh, Eighty dollars a piece, so we have four hundred eighty dollars. Cost on the vinyl is roughly twenty dollars per sign. Printing the signs is is thirty five. So I propose uh, posts. Uh, I think the county told us they're a hundred dollars each. We're hoping to get the county to um, provide those for us. And then uh, installation, hopefully the county's gonna help us out there, but uh, cost would be basically $100, basically a day going out and installing the signs. Comes to right about $1,500. Okay. Yeah, Chad, did you have It looks really nice, you guys did a great job. How many more signs we can work in the end? Well, um, you know, if we start getting into directional signs, then it will just be kind of a matter of prioritizing where we need them and then maybe take on a few a year kind of thing. You know, I, I think one of the glaring ones is there's really not much of you can, it's very hard to find our high school. It's hard to find our swimming pool at the high school because people go to the pool, go to the high school pool it's in the middle school you know there's um there's needs for things like that identifying um where the city pool is um 
the library. <laughs> So some of those would be in, in depth. The parking lots for the city could be identified. Um, so then we haven't really dove into that as far as what exact locations there are, but there's definitely some need for that. So. And if this, uh, this type of sign works well, definitely way more affordable than what I mean, we were looking at. Fourteen to twenty thousand dollars for this one company to do all this. So yeah, I remember that. it was. Uh, would, would the, some of the locators would be. I'm not sure how. Would attaching anything to the post, let's say as an example uh, for number five, if we put a sign uh, for ballparks or whatever down that road, it wouldn't matter. You wouldn't need about anything else, but for that one there. People coming in from town will be able to look and see. That's going to turn around, pass, going past it, and turn around from the driveway and come back. Is that something you had looked at at all? No, um, we haven't really looked at anything except just identifying the town at this okay. point. The yeah. town area. That starts somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, that I'm sorry. I was going to say that's actually not I mean that's a good idea because if you've already got the location identified adding you know black or soccer fields and softball diamonds yeah. same direction on that same location since it's already approved by NDOT mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah is it something you can just put another plate on underneath it maybe mm -hmm. perhaps perhaps yeah I mean there's going to be a single post we decided to go with single post versus double post there were some recommendations that this county gave us the size of the sign to prevent it from getting wobbly. Too much. You can get too too big a sign, then it, you can get this thing going in the wind. Mm -hmm. um, Easier mow around too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. I, that up I think much the direction sign. the directional signs for all those other things usually tend to have a you know a smaller header and then three or four okay. somethings, you know, but mm -hmm. it'll probably have a little different look than this one. Originally looked at a much larger sign and it would, you know, the cost of the, the metal for the sign itself was twice as much and then it would require two poles instead of one and sure. sort of say kind of back down. A normal stop sign's 24 by 24. This is 24 inches wide by 28 tall. That's a good, I mean, that's a good size sign. You don't need to sign any bigger than that. Mm -hmm. right. I was just in there looking at it thinking, yeah, if you're coming down the highway at 60 mile an hour, you, you, you're you going to see it. Mm -hmm. For these, you're right, you're going to get a ticket. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe in, in a couple of locations. <laughs> um, what time for me looking for? Like, you know, you're looking for something tonight and we get these started, or are you looking for us to get this in our budget for next year? Or what? Oh, no, we'd like to proceed with that this, this summer. Okay. And I think the money's budgeted. <coughs> yes. Yep. So we just need to vote. So the amount of just allocating for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've got, for this, uh, they actually have, we actually have appropriations in two different funds with RDP kind of associated to it. So Redevelopment Commission is one area, typically that's used for their facade grant projects um, we could do the signs from there or not the other one is economic development so I mean either fund it's the pleasure of the council can a motion to allocate the funds so move. second all right so moving second all in favor please see if I raise my hand all right thank you <laughs> and then the, the second um, request is involving our summer festival that we're going to have in August 27th. August 27th, yeah. And it's a um, second edition of the uh, Nickel Plate Art and Music and Art Festival. You said August 27th? Yes. She's, go ahead. Okay, she got lined up on that. Uh, it's similar to last year where we have free art projects for kids. Last year we had about six of them, and then we have five musicians, 
Um, most of them are local. Last year we had a reggae band. This year we're going to have a Latin duo. Um, Times? This year it's 11 to 10. Well, they'll be set up early, but the actual festival is 11 to 10. Okay. Uh, also, I talked with the United Way, and they'd like to do a 5K run with that too. They did it with the chili cook-off, but I believe that they're going to do it mm -hmm. with me this year. <clears throat> Refresh my memory. Did we just block off A Street from Maine to Madison? I think that's all we did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we didn't block off Maine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the most of the entertainment was on the courthouse lawn. Mm -hmm. Right, that's the same. That same woodwork, just that section blocked off. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's five different bands throughout, kind of staggered throughout the day, and then there's a <coughs> DJ there all day. Is there any projects downtown this summer that this going to interfere with, mm -hmm. or that, that might be a conflict? Possibly the stormwater, but we're starting the stormwater project the north from second to sixth. So okay. So, so we should be okay with that, other than potential construction traffic. But okay. I think it can be minimized. Yeah, okay. It's starting here, then it won't be a problem. I don't think. Okay. Yeah, no and the uh, the remaining nine street lights that we need to replace oh, around the courthouse. Um, yeah, those sh should as long as the materials come in. <laughs> I think we're still waiting. I think we're still waiting on the poles. Here we go with the metal. Um, yeah. But it's anticipated. They should have been, I wish Randy was here. They should. It should have been started by now, but I would anticipate that to be done by August. I would hope, I would hope so. <laughs> it's well, but it's yeah. not. I think they one day to kill the whole project. <laughs> well, the street lights are right around the courthouse, so it would just be a matter of making sure we have safe, the safety measures in place, that if yeah, there is something. Plus up any concrete or anything like that yeah. would be the only concern. Yep. Break it's done for Yeah, <laughs> I mean, at this point. <laughs> yeah. So the uh, total, what's the, how much of the bands? What, the total of everything or the yeah. breakdown of things? Go ahead and break down. <clears throat> okay, so the, the total of the bands is about 3,000. Um, one band comes from Chicago, so they're a little higher. Um, we have to pay our sound guy who's there the entire day. Um, uh, I have two chalk artists coming from Fort Wayne to draw on the ground. Also, it, on August 27th, it is National Tarzan Day. Mm. <laughs> so we'll have a little bit of a jungle theme that day and um, Elmo Lincoln was the first Tarzan who was born here. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to incorporate that a little bit as well. Yes. Um, so the chalk artists, they're about, they're 12 or 16. I have to read look that up, but essentially what I'm asking for is $5,500 from our mm -hmm. funds. That way we can lock everything in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that come out of economic, economic development. development. Mm -hmm. okay. I move that we release those funds. I'll second. Okay, so moving second in. All those in favor, we're seeing if I read in the right hand. Awesome. Okay, very much. <laughs> Thank you. Glad we had. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? We take no ways and we leave them. Let's go. Yeah, no, it's like a Let's go. Give us voted, yes. No, no, no. All right, we'd like to make this board position a paid seat. Uh. <laughs> 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 yes. Okay. Any other questions? If I have your attention for a minute, though, um, we are doing a fundraiser, expense of the Board of Works and everything, but we're going to have on the light poles and downward selling um, hometown hero banners for veterans. Uh, people can uh, 
go through the chamber. Um, if you have a picture of a loved one, a veteran, some point somewhere, uh, can send us an email. I'm going to work with the library to see if we can set up for scanning and make an email with a picture. Uh, again, can have screen printing would be printing the banners and we're going to have them hang up from when Christmas decorations go down to the it's the uh, the children's art mm -hmm. art banners the art banners go up in May mm -hmm. and after that's over the families can take the banners home and that's just getting the word out about that upcoming project for us that's similar to what is it Peru that does that yeah, a lot of communities do that. Wall bash is done. So we'll have order forms available at uh, Chamber Office, American Legion, VFW. Mm -hmm. and, um, Any idea how much the banners are now? $150. That's not bad. And they get to keep it when it's all done. No. Okay, I, I'm going to be the, the bearer of bad news with the monkey wrench. Okay. With the project downtown. When we start that stormwater project, I'm not sure how accessible our poles are going to be with our trucks, with the bucket trucks, just because yeah. I, I yeah, don't definitely. know. So just, I, I don't, I, I just don't want somebody to be surprised when they come in as you're trying to do the fundraising for this. So as long as everybody understands that, and it, but it's only to Sixth Street. So if we can, depending on how many you get, it will focus. Well, these won't be okay. this year anyway. Yeah. Okay, this so will this will be next start year. Next start year. Okay. When okay. Christmas decorations come down, they'll put these up. Okay. Okay. And then they'll might stay up for the rest of the year. <laughs> if they can't get them down. Yeah. <laughs> and the information, just so the RTC, because I'm not sure you speak so softly about the thing. Information, all that stuff is available at the Fulton County Chamber office. We're going to make a press release. Okay. In the next couple of weeks, perfect. We're getting all their ducks in a row, and you guys are the first to know. Yeah, we haven't got the forms to those places yet, so just sit tight. We don't want to tell people to okay. right. go in there asking for a form. Mm -hmm. Everybody can hear Harry; he talks loud. <laughs> <laughs> Coming soon. Okay. All right. Here. Ruth, you have anything for area plan? Um, I just had a few questions that uh, I, I was late at first, but a refrigerator down. My repairman didn't show up until a certain time. But they had a few questions about um, somebody uh, wants to put uh, solar panels, and our solar panel code is that. And I don't know the difference between medium, large, and small, but in town you can only install solar panels for your your building or whatever, and small, which is two, two maybe three solar panels. It's Anderson's. They need like nine, which then makes it medium. So we kind of started the discussion of is is that right? Because you don't want to tell. You don't want to tell a business, no, you don't want, you can't do that because, you know, who cares that you save money? Um, so, so, so they have th four different properties that they were going to put the solar panels on so that each property then has a small solar panel area, but one hookup. So does that make that small or does that make it medium? So we decided... Oh. How old is our ordinance? Are yeah, nobody really knew. So, so I think first we have to tell them no. So we ended up having to tell them no, and then, and and you know, so first you got to tick them off to get things to look at and the conversation getting started. That hey, reality is, is that something needs to change because really almost all the solar panels don't need to go. They don't need to go on all four pieces of property, if you didn't have to deal with this code, then you can put the solar panels on one property and then somebody else can buy the other property and do something else with it. So it was like, wow, are we screwed up. So, <laughs> so you know, but then how many other, how many other areas in the community are going to need that many solar panels within uh, 
city limits. Did you just mention also talk about whether they needed to be located on a roof or if they can be located Okay, in so I said grass. something about a roof because because Anderson's is a flat roof. Mm -hmm. Right? So why can't you put them up there? Well, I was told that your roof doesn't get near as much sun as the ground. So I was like, ah, oh, totally messed up my idea because I was thinking the evergreen, I would love to put some panels up on the roof. But apparently there's something about the heat that the solar panels create and then the roof is down here that, that it ruins the roof. And that made sense to me. Oh, that makes sense. I was just going to say that. Now, there was no professional solar panel person there. Mm -hmm. I, I we were I just would. having this discussion. Because there's a lot of solar panels on roofs. Mm -hmm. I've, I mean, in oh, yeah. other communities. I know I just, Goshen, I believe Goshen went through a big green uh, or, a few years ago reorganization of all of their codes. Right. For most houses, that's the way it's done. You, know, yeah. you see a whole side of a house covered with. Yeah. 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 Um, is that Flat a so plan? Are totally different mm -hmm. horse. Is, that's part, is that part of the comprehensive? Yeah. 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 So would that be? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
power transmission components is still working on installing machines and as of this meeting the following week they're planning on an open house and hiring which I believe that would be would have already occurred um, the 50,000 T-Mobile grant was submitted for rich investments and we should hear back on that from about 30 to 60 days. Um, FEDCO is also looking for other grant opportunities for projects. And Tiffany is also currently working on a community foundation grant for $20,000 to go toward the organizational assessment. Depending on your questions, that's my report. Sessions completed where you were looking for public input. Uh, no, no, they're not. They're, they're going to continue. I, there has not been a lot of uh, participation, and you know, the one I signed up for, I, <laughs> I did not make it to. So shame on me. Yeah. But they are ongoing. Um, if you guys haven't already received one, you should be receiving an invite to one. I, uh, I just wondered how they were all going. <clears throat> okay, park award. All right, BZA and Council on Aging. You're down to me? I am. Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, Council on Aging met yesterday. There wasn't much to report from uh, Transpo. RSVP sold uh, 2,300 green mm -hmm. carnations on that March fundraiser, which sounded like a big number to me. But um, they serviced 65 people with tax appointments and, and helped with uh, those returns. They, they do that at free of charge. They do get some donations. Uh, we are having on May 6th, and certainly the entire community is invited to a dedication ceremony where the activity room, if you guys will recall, uh, we granted uh, permission to Name the activity room at the community center the Terry Moore room. That is going to be dedicated on May 6th at 1230. <clears throat> there are going to be uh, snacks and uh, cake and coffee for anybody that comes there. I'm sorry. Mike, Again, that's you? May 6th at 1230. And the rides for Transpo are starting to get back to pre-COVID levels. Uh, in March of 22, there were 2,330 rides given uh, from Transpo. As far as the BZA is concerned, that group meets tomorrow night. There's one item on the agenda. Sounds like it'll be a little bit interesting. It's a little bit different. Uh, the applicant for the variance wants to split a small property into two small properties for the purpose of building a garage for the neighbor <laughs> on the small property and I'm assuming to rent it I don't I don't know but uh, there is some dissension in the neighborhood and so they're gonna have an interesting Where's that at? it's on Boulevard Street 20 to 2132 so, uh, yeah. that's uh, the meeting tomorrow night Barring questions, that's my report. Questions for Marty? All right, solid waste and animal adoption center. 
saw the waste group did not meet this month. They will be meeting next month. Animal adoption group did meet, and uh, Janet and the board are doing an excellent job, as always. Uh, one interesting point, they said that they had twice as many animals brought in this quarter in comparison to this time last year. Right. But they've been able to adopt almost all of them out. All right. So uh, a good job keeping up with things. They are planning to do some spay and neuter clinics coming up for the public. And I believe they are going to be running again the uh, low income options for people where they cover some of the costs for folks that maybe can't afford that for animals. So, uh, yeah, a lot of good things going. And They'll continue to give us updates as they put things together. Thank you. Any questions? All right, tree board EMS. <clears throat> tree board met last week on the 21st. We're moving along. We're, no plantings are set yet, but they're yeah. working on getting things going with that. The, utilizing the uh, survey that was done, and so we're trying to find out where what's need not, not what's needed necessarily, but if everybody wants maple trees put in, it always sounds nice until there's a problem, like we had emerald ash borers or anything else that kills all the maple trees. So we're looking to see what we currently have and what would be beneficial to put in to spread things out. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. They're looking to at some time, probably next month to the next tree trimming and removal contract should go out. Uh, and then again with that survey they're looking at identifying trees that will need help in the next two or three years and put it on the radar and, and watch those and take preventative measures. So hopefully they don't fall down somebody's car or house. That's about it. Oh and, uh, Arbor Day is still working on getting a something with that and get it going so we keep the tree city status. Who's the <laughs> who's I'm gonna move that. the best person to refer somebody to about a removing a tree or b what trees to select to plant? There is a process through that we have either online or if they pick up the form here at the city hall. Okay, to get that. And I don't want to push it off on Chad, but Chad knows how long. No, he just. And the answer to the uh, question is, to answer the question, who they yes. contact and how they do it online and all that. So. Yeah, easiest thing is just having contact City Hall. Um, and Brian's right. We we do have a form online now underneath the tree board link that people can go print it off, fill it out, and drop it off. It, it still has to come paper form here. Um, and they can drop it off, and then my staff will scan and email it to the board for review. And then, they, then the board will contact the homeowner. Can I ask them? Sure. Do you have to get permission from the city to plant certain trees? I mean, I know it's like the ice bore and that or not, but I mean it. If it's in the tree lawn, if it's outside of the tree lawn and in your own yard, then it would be recommended to find out if there's any invasive species or issues with species. Um, also, especially where your infrastructure runs into the property. So wherever your sewer and water lines are, you okay. definitely want to make sure that you don't um, damage those with whatever tree you plant because some of them have the one thing with the tree board is they can a lot of times they'll be able to tell you if it's a root system that spreads out right. or one that goes more straight down so I mean it's the only one we really regulate is the tree lawn itself between the sidewalk and the street sorry Brian did you I <laughs> no that, that answers the question okay <laughs> thank you you're welcome that's it <coughs> any other questions all right water board <coughs> I missed the last water board meeting, um, and as far as I know, I did not get any uh, any notification from uh, Rachel. So I'm assuming the water board meeting made it, and everybody was there. Uh, the last that I had heard, everything is going fine at the water department, but I don't know. I didn't get it, but I corrected I corrected the date. 
because she said it out, out that it was going to be on the 3rd of April. Mm -hmm. And I corrected I just sat back and said, you know, the 3rd is on the Sunday. I think we're going on the 4th. And I got no more, no further communication. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I will say that. saying it may be the finest John Garrett water board report. That, <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. Thank you. Right. <laughs> well, I was going to say the only update we have is the issue that we were running into with the main over at Fox Run. Oh, yes. We found the valves. So it's not as big of a, uh, not as a big that, deal now. Nope. Nope. Good. Well, that's good. Yeah, so there's your good news water board update. Great. Legal department. Do you have I knew we'd do it. Do not have anything. Any ADA concerns? Great. Motion to entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay, second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I will put every communication for the mayor. We were told it starts in the mayor. Oh, no, always six. So that's okay. <laughs>